it's great trout here. Like huge. <laughs> you saw an osprey? No, that's their nest up there. They come in back yearly and they nest there. There was a bunch of them there this summer, Tammy and I saw Cool, cool. With the upward bound students. Nice. And then there's, we do that now. There's still the big bald eagle <laughs> nest out there. <coughs> Okay, so there has been restoration in this area as well. They still do monitor water quality and everything. And we know that, especially in the summer months, that is due to some kind of chemical reaction that I cannot describe to you well. But there is a lot more arsenic coming into the uh, systems as uh, you know, compared to uh, aquatic life standards. I think it actually reaches 10 or maybe even more. So still problem and especially again in the summer months. But in spite of that, this is one of the best fishing areas. They actually built these accesses and you see that there is, uh, you know, uh, bathrooms and everything that people can stop and fly fish. They say the the size of the trawl that they catch here is just unbelievable. But as you saw it, it was written there, catch and release. So you definitely shouldn't take out fish from here because they can have all kinds of uh, uh, contaminants accumulated in their bodies. So you don't want to get uh, in contact with that. You see uh, a little bit of river restoration here, but we will go to phase one, which is a newly built uh, system. Up till here, we talk about the uh, restoration, reclamation, remediation of the Silverbow Creek, which was a totally different uh, group of people and totally different uh, uh, ideas. In the case of Clark Fork River, they didn't uh, take out the, the, the water from its channel. Uh, but in the case of Silverbow, you remember when, uh, for example, um, Rich Rogers talked about the, how the whole area was cleaned up from the tailings and then they, they actually created a bypass or kind of just a, 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 a pipe where through they led the river and they didn't do that in the case of the Clark Fork, they just actually focused on the floodplain and the banks. So from here on, there would be a really different kind of an approach. They still do a lot of cleanup and taking out uh, a lot of sediments, but they do a lot of, they don't really uh, focus on doing that thorough of a job because the extent of the contamination from that uh, area is also a little less. Okay, I don't know what else shall I say. Do you have questions right now? If not, no problem, but I just point out some of the reclamation grasses here. There is a native species that they actually used. It's a bunch grass. It's called slender wheat grass. Um, and it's just emerged here next to the, the red top. And you can see that there is again a lot of sandbar willows and uh, good sedges nearby. I don't see actually here the, the foxtail that we talked about earlier although it uh, might be because this is not connected to it. This is a different uh, channel. It, it's a different creek. It's not Silverbow. Okay, if you don't have questions right here, we go over to phase one, where it's already Clark Fork restoration, and that's the first part of it, which was finished in 2013. And we do that. We need to hop in to the bus, but it will be kind of a two-minute drive. OK? 